G'day guys and welcome to another episode of Project XB. In this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to make our fuel system up. So we're going to use our PTFE hose, so 200 series hose with the PVC cover. And what we'll do there is show you how we go about making all of that up. We'll also fit our radiator um, and hopefully we'll get awfully close to getting this cranky 351 started. So stick around, hopefully it's a good episode. And if you like it, please like, share and subscribe. Okay guys, just a bit of an update on Project XB. So as you're most likely aware, the hardtop reunion has been cancelled for 2021. So there's no immediate goal to get this thing up and running anytime soon. However, that is not going to phase us because we'll just keep on going as if the deadline was there. Because as soon as I remove a deadline from myself, um, what I do find is I quite quickly lose motivation and this thing will drag on for another 10 years even though we are awfully close to finishing it. So even though there is no hardtop reunion that we were aiming for in Mildura, we will get this thing finished hopefully in the next few weeks. So now that the COVID restrictions for us as far as being able to work on it have come to an end, um, I'll continue to plow on with this car. We'll get this thing finished. Um, and then we'll be able to just take it to normal sort of car shows and cruises and all of those sorts of things. So for Project XB, what we're going to be using is this, which is a 200 series PTFE hose. So it is Dash 8 and it has got the black PVC cover. Now in order to cut this, what we need to do is make sure that we do it so that it is square. So I wrap a bit of masking tape around it and I cut it with an angle grinder. You can do it a little bit less ghetto, but this seems to get the result. So when we take the uh, masking tape off, this is what you end up with. So you can see that the braid is looking good and it's still round, which is exactly what you want. And I haven't destroyed the PVC cover. However, when we go to fit it, we need to move to the next step. Now it's time to fit the fitting. So we use a little bit of silicon spray on this just so that we can actually get it over the uh, hose because like that cover is like quite, um, I don't know, creates a little bit of friction, makes it a little bit harder than just over normal grade. So you can see there it's a little bit of a struggle but not a massive issue. So I'll just grab a towel and just give it a little bit of a, a squeeze and a, and a push. So after that we're able to push it down and push it through. So what we're needing to do here is just put it down far enough just so that we can expose a little bit of the hose. Because what we need to do next is we need to remove some of that PCV cover. So we don't need to remove much, probably about a half an inch. So all I'm using here is just a Stanley knife or just a blade. And all you do is you just cut through the PVC. All right, so you're not gonna be going through the um, the braid or touching the PTFE liner inside all we need to do is literally remove some of the PVC so that's what we're doing here didn't even cut myself so that's a bit of a plus so once we've removed it what you can see is we are now left with just what looks like a normal braided hose so I'll just bring that into the camera now so you can see it so there you go so we've got that into uh, we've got that all sorted the next thing that we need to do is fit the little olive so um, before we can do that of course like what we'll do is just grab a screwdriver and just um, bring some of the braid away from the actual PTFE liner. So that will make sure that that's all um, good and we're able to get our little olive in between the liner and the braid. One thing that's critical here is making sure that there are none of the little um, braids in between the liner and the olive. Um, because if we do that, um, we're gonna end up with a leak. 
So just make sure that it's well and truly away, that you can see that I'm doing that with just a flat blade. Again, you can probably use a proper tool, but yeah, you can see there that I've um, managed to push that far enough away. Once we've got that, it's a matter of just fitting that little olive. So it looks a little bit like this. So that will actually um, go and press up flush against the PTFE liner. So like you can see there, just by pushing that down, that's what it looks like. And then after that, what we need to do is we need to just bring the um, fitting up a little bit just so that it is nice and snug. And we can actually get the other part of the fitting so that it will um, fit in there. So you can see there that it's like um, hard up against the liner. So I've tried to show you that as best as I can. So there's no gap between the actual liner and the olive fitting itself. All I'm doing now is just lubricating the threads because like they bite in and you can actually get this thing to start a couple of turns just by hand and then it gets extremely tight in which case you do need to use um, a couple of tools so like you can see that that's pushing on there and then once that's pushed we can start the threads now i don't have the correct tools i wasn't going to buy them um, i don't do enough of this commercially and like that and this is a really cheap way to get it out of it so i've just got the vise i've got some aluminium jaw uh, jaws for the vise and then just using a little bit of masking tape. You can use electrical tape as well, but like masking tape is what I had um, closer to me. So um, doing that, you don't necessarily need to do this, but it does protect the threads, especially if you're gonna be using the angry end of a shifter. So once we've um, got it started, then you can just go ahead and fit it by turning it in. So it's just like turn the thing over um, until you get to a point where you've got a one millimetre gap and that's all you need to do. So here I am um, turning this thing using a shifter. So yeah, fun and games. being really really careful usually I'm not this slow but like I just didn't want to mark and destroy the um, the aluminium fitting so just taking my time with it didn't have anywhere better to be so yeah you can go as fast or as slow as you like if you go really really quickly and um, don't use the tape you can destroy them up but if you want to make it look semi reasonable then uh, yeah that's the best way to go about it so all I did was um, turn it until it got a millimetre gap between the uh, thread and the other fitting um, and then all you do then is just go ahead and um, turn the thing until such time as all of your flats for your um, fitting all line up so it looks a little bit professional um, and it should be good as gold and hopefully when we fit it we don't get any leaks. And you can see it gets awfully tight as you start getting toward the end of it. But again, the lubrication that we've put on there as well will prevent any galling in the actual threads. Now, if you don't do that, um, yeah, the galling can actually make them leak between the threads, which is not nice. Once we're all done, it looks like that. You can see that we've got our fuel filter and we've got the Dash 8 fitting in there. So that white stuff there is just some thread sealer to prevent any leaks. And if we do the same process enough times, what we'll end up with is a complete fuel system. So looking at it from the tank through the filter to the actual fuel pump that you can see, just over on the right hand side and then we'll have a bit of a squiz and see what it looks like on the rest of the car so looking at it now so out of the fuel pump and you can barely make it out but that's the best light that I could get um, it goes through along the chassis rail and then along the sill into another fuel filter and then off toward the engine bay and in the engine bay on the right hand side underneath the heater hoses you can see the fuel pump regulator 
and then that goes off into the fuel log that feeds the carburetor and we've got our old moon eyes uh, fuel pressure gauge there as well to just ensure that we've got fuel pressure when we go to test it. So we're looking all pretty good there as far as the fuel system goes. So all that's left to do is to put some fuel in the tank and prime it and hopefully we get no leaks. So fingers crossed that there are no leaks and if we're looking good then we're one step closer to firing this beastie. So made up a top plate and got a Ford logo engraved onto that. So you can see as we come around that we've got a couple of brackets there, there for our thermo fans. We'll look at those in a second. And you can see that we've also got a bung that's been ticked on and that takes our BMW thermo switch. So that's also looking good. So looking over the other side now, um, you can see that it's a PWR radiator, so aluminium radiator, so extra thermal efficiency and the fact that I couldn't get hold of a um, genuine Ford one all that easily, so ended up going with this. So we've got a couple of brackets there that will mount our thermo fans and just looking at this now, we've got our drain bung that's been um, put into it. So that was part of the PWR radiator. So mounting our thermo fans, you can see that they fit over those brackets, so they had the nut set and then we've got a couple of bolts that just go and bolt those in. And you can see our wiring just all um, fits up there nicely top of the thermo fan fit really really nice underneath that top plate so looking really really good and ready to go in the car so let's do it okay so this is with the radiator that's been mounted beautifully into the vehicle so we've gone and made some custom radiator brackets so we didn't have to use the original Ford ones so the only thing that we've got left to do is to bleed up the cooling system we need to put some oil in the engine we also need to put some transmission fluid in the transmission um, and once we've got that all sorted we should be able to see if the thing will start so it's going to be awfully loud and it's going to come out of straight pipes so hopefully it will um, fire um, but we'll do that in the next video because this one is getting quite long so hopefully you enjoyed this one um, and if you did please like share and subscribe Look out for the next one, which will be coming up very, very shortly, hopefully tomorrow, where we'll actually try to start the beast. So stick around for that.